Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a mono blue cauldron combo deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And this deck is doing some degenerate things such as make infinite mana to then combo kill the opponent with the Hellkite's ability. For one in a red we can deal one damage to any target. If we have infinite mana that means infinite damage to the opponent to win the game. Now how do we make infinite mana? We do need several combo pieces. One of which is Angatha's Soul Cauldron. This two mana legendary artifact says we can spend Spend mana as a third tour mana of any color to activate abilities of creatures we control. So that's why we can activate the red ability on Hellkite, despite not having any red mana in our mana base. Then we can tap the Soul Cauldron, exiling any card from a graveyard. And when a creature card is exiled this way, we can put a plus one plus one counter on a target creature we control. And then creatures we control with plus one plus one counters on them have all activated abilities of all creature cards exiled with the Soul Cauldron. So the goal is to exile several creatures with useful abilities with the Cauldron. And if we combine the right ones, we can potentially set up that infinite mana combo. And the two creatures in question are Omen Hawker and Sleep Cursed Fairy. The fairy has an ability for one and a blue, which can untap it, which is useful to remove its stun counter so it can finally start attacking and blocking as a 3-3 flyer with Ward 2. So pretty difficult for the opponent to take out early on in the game. And then Omen Hawker is a 1-1 that can tap for a colorless and a blue mana, but we can only spend that mana to activate abilities, such as, for instance, the Sleep Curse Fairy's ability to untap it. So let's say we have a Sleep Curse Fairy in play, Omen Hawker in the graveyard that we exiled with a Soul Cauldron, putting a plus one counter on Fairy. Then now the Fairy can tap for a blue and a colorless, thanks to the Omen Hawker's activated ability given by the Soul Cauldron. And then the Fairy can untap using its own ability, so it can basically keep making mana and untap itself. Now this doesn't actually generate infinite mana, so we do need one additional combo piece, which is Training Grounds. Since activated abilities of creatures we control cost two less to activate, this effect cannot reduce the mana to less than one. So now if we have Training Grounds alongside this pairing, we can actually generate one extra mana with each iteration of the loop, netting us infinite mana if we do it infinite times. And then once we have infinite mana, we could potentially exile a Realm Scorcher Hellkite with the Soul Cauldron as well, and then turn that infinite mana into infinite damage. We also have four copies of Hypnotic Grifter, which is very important in this deck as well, as a one mana, one two. For three mana, we get to connive, meaning we draw and discard. If we discard a non-land card, we can put a plus one plus one counter on the creature in question. So now let's say we have infinite mana and a Grifter in play, or potentially we exile the Grifter with a Soul Cauldron. Now we get to infinitely connive, eventually drawing into the Hellkite, which we can then discard, and then we can set up the combo that way as well, or we can just get enough plus one plus one counters through connive to set up a lethal attack, even if it's not going to be infinite damage, since we will eventually run out of non-land cards in our library, so that can also be very useful. And then letting us discard a Sleep Cursed Fairy or Omen Hawker can also be essential to set up the combo with the Soul Cauldron. And then another discard outlet is Arona, which can just tap to draw and discard. If we cast a legendary spell, such as our Soul Cauldron, we get to untap Arona, so that gives us a second activation. And we can also transform Arona into the Tolarian Obliterator if we pay 6 mana or 5 mana and 2 life. So that's where, once again, Training Grounds can be very helpful, discounting the ability, so we can potentially just pay 3 mana and 2 life to transform Arona into a 5-5. And then we also have four copies of Surge Engine, which has great synergy with Training Grounds and Omen Hawker, giving us extra mana for activated abilities. Starts out as a 3-2 defender. For a single blue, it turns into an attacker that cannot be blocked. Then for two and a blue, it turns into a blue creature with power and toughness 5-4. And finally, for six mana, we get to draw three cards, only get to use this once and only if Surge Engine is a blue creature. So let's say we actually exiled Surge Engine with our Soul Cauldron and put a plus one counter on, I'm just going to say, Hypnotic grifter then now if we have six mana available or maybe four mana with the training grounds in play we can immediately draw three cards since grifter is already a blue creature so it kind of skips a few steps in that way can also turn grifter into a 5-4 that cannot be blocked so the surge engine definitely gives us some useful abilities to either just win with damage or give us enough card draw to assemble the combo and then the rest of our deck includes a ton of cheap cantrips four copies of consider can also surveil additional creatures into our graveyard to set up our soul cauldron 
And then we've got four copies of Sleight of Hand and two copies of Impulse, which can also dig pretty deep to find our missing cards. So despite needing four combo pieces essentially to combo off, the deck is still pretty consistent thanks to all these cantrips. And then we also have two copies of Witness Protection, giving us a little bit of interaction. Can transform an opposing creature into a 1-1 that loses all abilities. Very important when our opponent has a Shieldred in play, since we often end up drawing and discarding a whole bunch with a connive from Grifter. And if we lose two life each time, we're going to be dead very quickly. And then we can also potentially use it to shut down a card like Danik, which can also shut down access to our graveyard. So having a few removal spells is still important. Can of course also use our Sorting City to bounce a problematic permanent back for a turn and then try to combo off. So yeah, the deck's pretty complicated to play as we'll see in the games, but a lot of fun and very rewarding once we get to combo off. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and the uh, triple training grounds is a bit much, but if Rona survives, we can discard the additional copies. So I'll still give it a go here. Turn one training grounds, turn two Rona. Opponent with turn one swamp evolves sleeper, so chances of Rona surviving are pretty slim. If our opponent's playing mono black, they'll have shielded, so we may need to find witness protection at some point. For now we can block Evolved Sleeper, implies that our opponent is going to make it into a 2-2. Okay, so I get at least one Rona activation, and then let's slide off hand for now. Surge Engine and Sleep Cursed, both decent, Surge Engine probably the better one of the two. And then I can play it, and next turn with Training Grounds, we can also transform our Surge Engine pretty quickly. Probably won't see me block, unless we want to trade Surge Engine for Evolved Sleeper, but I don't think I do. Surge Engine also survives Go for the Throat, so that's a nice upside of being an artifact. And Liliana is next, also pretty effective. At least we'll be able to finish it off if we want to. Enough with the mysteries. I've come for answers. And training grounds can go. And I think goodbye, Rona. Off you go. Sleep cursed, good to have in the graveyard at some point. For now, we could also play it. And then level up Surge Engine twice. Don't have to level up again. This is enough to kill Liliana. And then we could consider play Sleep Curse, maybe untap it once. Another consider not super useful. Find another one anyways. Okay. So play Fairy. Upside of activating Surge Engine once again is that it would also survive Cutdown as well as Virtue of Persistence, so maybe I will actually go for it here. I guess we could wait, and then if our opponent passes with a bunch of mana untapped, then I could just not activate anything, but that's potentially going to put us in an awkward spot. So this way, there's not much removal out of the mono black deck that can kill Surge Engine. So this might turn into a race. Trespassers next can definitely counteract our cauldron. Rona's gone. Now, if I play another training grounds, it would still help in getting to the final ability on Surge Engine. So I pay one mana to get a two mana discount, essentially. Still not the best use of my resources, perhaps. So I could play the Consider to keep it daytime. Witness Protection will be useful if Shieldress shows up, although our opponent doesn't seem to have it yet. Do I want to keep it then? Not really. Find a land instead. So now I could just pass with a bunch of mana untapped. To either draw with Surge Engine or to uh, untap Sleep Cursed Fairy. Sleepers can gain Death Touch, so those are not as nice to try and block. So I think we'll let those through for now. 
and then plan to draw with Surge Engine. It's going to be a Flash Gorger next. And we'll draw. Find Hellkites and Cauldron. Okay, so now I just need a way to discard this Hellkite and potentially find Omen Hawker as well to set up the infinite combo. Uh, for now, happy to play Cauldron. But our opponent's also pretty close to killing us, so... Yeah, definitely a precarious situation. Just gotta pass it back. And then maybe trade Surge Engine for Evolved Sleeper for opponent offers, and then I can use Soul Cauldron to uh, give the same abilities to the Sleep Cursed Fairy to eventually draw. Might have been worth it to play Training Grounds because of that. And I don't want to lose both of my creatures, so I think it's just block Evolved Sleeper here. And hope our opponent doesn't have another Liliana. It's gonna be a Trespasser, at least we can uh, use Cauldron in response. There is also Evolved Sleeper, which we could uh, use thanks to Cauldron fixing for colors. So we could immediately draw three here, which is probably a good starting point. Another Surge Engine. Now at four life, we're still in a bit of trouble here, unless we can assemble our combo. But... Um, yeah, missing a few cards in Exile with Cauldron to actually fully combo off, even if we do make infinite mana. There's no Grifter, for instance, to get a lot of plus one counters. So I do actually need to survive with enough blockers, basically. So to that end, I can play Grifter. Play Surge Engine. And then... I can untap Sleep Curse for one mana. I can make this up to a 5-4. Cauldron to exile Sleeper so Trespasser doesn't drain me. And then, yeah, hopefully only Flesh Gorger connects. Although I guess there's also Mitra's Foundry, so if they activate Foundry, I might be dead. No Mishra's found reactivation, that's good. Trespasser goes for Evolved Sleeper. And Training Grounds and Response. Thanks, all Evolved Sleeper. And then probably put counter on Surge Engine. Since Grifter can get counters using its own ability, it plays around cut down a bit better. Okay, so before blockers untap Sleep Cursed. And go to blocks. Okay, so... This one on Trespasser. This one on Trespasser, Grifter on Sleeper. These are my blocks. I'll level up Surge Engine twice. And then Grifter could connive. Probably discarding Hellkite at this point. Even though we could play around another Trespasser by waiting. Would not let damage happen. And a shieldred is next. Can I do anything in my upkeep here to not lose the game? Hmm, I guess what we can do is use Cauldron to exile Hellkite and then deal 5 damage to shieldred. Yeah, that's one way to survive.
and then doesn't matter too much here. So five Hellkites activations necessary to survive. Okay, that all happens. Shield it down. Get to take our draw step and we're still alive somehow. Okay, so can I kill my opponent now? 10, 13 damage. Not quite. Could draw with Surge Engine. Also have all the Evolved Sleeper abilities now. Uh, Flesh Gorger, of course. Needs us to have a few creatures back on defense. So maybe just attack with Sleep Cursed, which I can untap. Play Grifter. Also need to respect Mishra's Foundry. Although it would be nice to be able to kill my opponent next turn. So what if I also send Surge Engine? I think it's a little bit risky with Mishra's Foundry. Okay, pass the turn. I guess we could also kill Mishra's Foundry with the Hellkite's ability. Another Flesh Gorger, that's fine. So, can do a few things here, end of turn. Uh, let's see. Can just go with two damage upstairs. We could also transform some of these into unblockable surge engines, essentially. And then we should be pretty close to killing the opponents. And then we've got one mana left. Could connive. Discard training grounds. Okay, could keep digging to find Omen Hawker to make infinite mana. Let's try that. There's Omen Hawker. Okay. So now I can discard it to connive. Use Cauldron. Exiling Omen Hawker. Counter doesn't really matter. And that should be game. Oh, wow, what a close one here against Mono Black. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a very promising hand. Got Hawker, Training Grounds, Cauldron, just missing Sleep Cursed Fairy to make infinite mana for abilities at least. And then turn one, probably go for Omen Hawker if it dies. That's totally fine. Against Red Aggro, okay. So this is a pure race. Can play Surge Engine and to level it up at least once here. Growing this up to a 5-4 could be nice, so it could have also waited to play Surge Engine with the Training Grounds in play, for instance. Felden gets in for 3. Could have also traded to get Surge Engine in the graveyard, but I don't want to run out of creatures. Okay, so what's next? Still digging for Sleep Cursed Fairy. Grifter gives us an ability to potentially discard it if we draw Sleep Cursed Fairy. So maybe kick things off with a Sleight of Hand. Then I could still Training Grounds and activate Surge Engine up to a 5-4. Okay, we'll grab the Consider. Would be nice to hit my Land Drop for the turn, so I think I still try to Consider. And then get rid of Impulse, find a land, and then we can play Training Grounds, activate Surge Engine up to a 5-4, and I'll just play defense with it. Not gonna try to outrace Monoreth. Omen Hawker is secretly the more important of the two creatures when it comes to setting up our combo. Okay, I'll block Etching if they want to finish off Surge Engine, that's fine by me. 
Monstrous Rage, still a trade. And then now we don't have to worry about our creatures getting exiled by etching of Kumano. All their opponents got another one, down to 11 we go. So now I could play a Grifter, play Cauldron, and then have quite a few options available at instant speed, thanks to the Connive as well. So I'll just pass it back. Now our Surge Engine did get exiled by Kumano, so that's not something we can uh, exile here. But I could put another Grifter in the graveyard with a Connive. So do I start there, maybe? Okay, Omen Hawker we could also discard. So I could use Grifter again. Rona is not a bad one to either play or discard. So we could attempt to block Felden. Another monstrous rage would be annoying. So I could also just let this one slide. Or I can block with Grifter. See if there's a response. We still have another Grifter to dig towards Sleep Cursed Fairy. Yeah, this seems fine. Opponent's gonna let damage happen. Felden triggers. Revealing a couple creatures. And a lightning strike to finish off Grifter. Okay. So then we'll use Cauldron on uh, Verona or Omen Hawker. Let's go with Verona. And a third Kumano, I guess it's the fourth one. Okay, next turn opponent gets to play Adversary. If they also have a land, they get back a Lightning Strike, which is going to be painful. For now, we could start with Consider, see if we can put Fairy in the graveyard if we get lucky. Another training ground not too helpful. So just play Grifter. Probably okay to play a land still. And then we can pass a turn with Connive and uh, Cauldron available. Can also draw and discard with Rona's ability. Just need to make sure we have a creature left to uh, combo off with. So no land. Still get two counters from Kumano. And a Swiss Spear. Now, of course, we could have also used Cauldron to counteract the adversary's ability. So I can put Omen Hawker on Swiss Spear, Grifter on Etching, and then either Connive or use Cauldron. Start with Connive. Connive again. And then this can use Rona's ability to draw and discard. And there's the fairy, perfect. So now we should be able to combo off. Exile, Sleep Cursed Fairy. We're at five. And then now it's just a matter of finding our Hellkite once we make infinite mana for abilities. And then we can use the Connive to find our dragon. Could also just Connive to get enough plus one counters to attack for lethal. So a few ways we can close out the game here. But once we have infinite mana for abilities, it's usually not too difficult to find a win. So I'll just make 10 or 20 mana here. So we don't have to worry about it for the rest of the turn. Do want to be as efficient as possible since timing out is certainly a concern when playing this deck. So I'll make a little bit more mana. And then we can start conniving to try and find Hellkites. And once Hellkites in the graveyard, I can use Cauldron to exile it. 
and then we can turn infinite mana into infinite damage. Alright, so we're at a point where we can start conniving. Soaring City gives us a bit of interaction. Now, if you were wondering what happens if you transform a creature with the Rona's ability, if it's not actually Rona, the answer is nothing happens. So I would not recommend going for it. And all right, our opponent has seen enough. They see that we can grow with connive. And that's game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is not perfect, but I think I'm keeping... Training Grounds is pretty good alongside Sleep Cursed Fairy. And then if Sleep Cursed Fairy dies and we find Cauldron, that's not too bad. Opponent on blue-black fairies themselves. And yeah, let's just go Training Grounds, another Sleep Cursed. And having a bunch of 3-3s three on defense is going to help prolong the game to a point where we can hopefully set up the combo. Opponent with a sleight of hand. Don't really care about a second training grounds as much. Can still be useful alongside a surge engine, for instance. But only really need one to combo off, so our opponent takes our consider. Okay, can play a grifter, play a land. And then Grifter can also activate for one mana here. But we'll pass a turn. So I can potentially untap the Sleep Cursed instead. If our opponent tries to cut down Grifter, I could potentially connive twice, discarding a non-land card. And then it could survive cut down. So our opponent is just going to hang on to all their mana. In which case, yeah, we could connive with Grifter. And then maybe untap Sleep Cursed. And then we might see removal on Grifter here in response. Fairy Fencing. Okay. So, yeah, maybe just connive again. Giving us a bit more card selection here. And found our Cauldron, so we'll definitely keep that one. Still need to watch out for Spell Stutter. So maybe I can bait it out with another Sleep Cursed. That resolved. I think it's fine to go for a Cauldron now. That also resolves. And then I can activate a first time exiling Grifter, perhaps. Could do this at instant speed too, so maybe just wait. But we've got an army of Sleep Cursed Fairies ready to untap and start attacking. And then we just need an Omen Hawker to go infinite here. We do have to watch out for a potential Soaring City bouncing our artifacts. That's the most likely interaction for the opponent to have. Otherwise, I don't really expect any artifact removal. Opponent takes their turn. Four mana. Could see Italian. It's gonna be a Hill of Forger getting back. Fairy fencing wouldn't really work on our ward creature. So maybe just a sleight of hand. Could respond with Cauldron Exiling. Consider here, for instance. Which is maybe okay. Untap, find another cauldron. Okay, so now we want to go for Rona. Let's go for Grifter, actually, since we have a training ground in play. And then I could just uh, activate for one mana. Could even attack first, see if our opponent blocks. And then we can grow it at instant speed. And then I could just play Rona. But 
but we might be able to just win with damage here. Invasion of Amoncats is going to mill us, which potentially helps our cauldron. And no creatures. Opponent does get to transform it right away. So now we don't have Cauldron available to potentially disrupt the opponent's plan. Opponent makes a copy of Rona. And they're gonna fencing the real Rona here as well. Okay, Surge Engine was a good draw. So we certainly have options. Could start with an activation from Connive to discard Surge Engine so I can use Cauldron, give the ability to Sleep Cursed Fairy. So that can also grow here. I can also focus more on finding our Omen Hawker to completely combo off. So a few ways we can go about it. Yeah, I'm not super interested in playing the Surge Engine, so let's connive it away. Sleight of hand. And uh, I guess we'll grab the Impulse here. Okay, so I could still connive with Fairy, although I can also just cast the Impulse next turn to dig for Omen Hawker. And then for now, could attack for 6. And then at least next turn I could be threatening lethal. Sure. And then we'll still have Cauldron we can activate, potentially giving Rona's ability to the untapped fairy, so that can also draw and discard. Or by giving it the connive ability, we can make it up to a 5-5. It's gonna be a Halo Forager, we'll see what it targets. Because of wards, we're safe from removal. And going for Ego Drain. So, yeah, could just uh, counteract it by using Cauldron, which seems fine. Get to keep my Impulse. And Rona hits us for four. No blocks. And then I can untap Sleep Cursed Fairy. Find a sleight of hand. So where do we want to start? Impulse digs four cards deep. If I draw Omen Hawker, just need to connive, discard it, and then we're off to the races. And there's Omen Hawker. Okay, so for one mana, connive. Discard Omen Hawker. And then now use Cauldron, exiling Omen Hawker. And we'll target a different fairy here. Okay, so now I can tap this to make two mana, untap for one mana. So that's infinite mana for activated abilities, which means we can infinitely connive as well. So both Sleep Cursed Fairies are lethal, since we'll have enough non-land cards to discard. And our opponent concedes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Training Grounds powers up Surge Engine and potentially even the transformation on Rona. And we'll be digging for Soul Cauldron. For now, probably start by playing Rona, even though Surge Engine I could also double transform next turn. But I do want to start drawing and discarding as soon as possible. So our opponent blue-white. Okay, don't want to overextend into potential Sunfall, which exiles our creatures, which kind of counteracts our cauldron as well. But I think it's still reasonable to play a Surge Engine here. And then pass a turn. 
where I can activate Rona, potentially activate Surge Engine or cast Consider. Very mastermind. Okay, so in response we're gonna wanna activate Rona perhaps, as well as a Consider. Okay, could discard another Rona or just a land here. And yeah, let's just consider. Next turn, I wouldn't be able to get this to level 3, even if I activate it now. Since it's still gonna be 4 mana, plus another 1 mana for the second mode. And I don't think I need another training ground, even though it would be okay with a surge engine here. Find another one. Okay. And wedding announcements makes a 1 1. So I have to wait to use Rona until the opponent's turn. For now, I could activate Surge Engine twice and play another one. And that's going to be a pretty fast clock. Mastermind hits for two. And announcement makes a 1-1. One, one. I'll draw and discard. And a land can go. Another search engine. Okay, so we have options. Could also transform Rona. And just beat down with all our creatures here. Which I don't hate. So let's start here, see if there's a response. Okay, and then, yeah, let's transform Rona. And level this up as well. And if they don't have any interaction, they'll be forced to jump Rona, which is not where they want to be. It's going to be a whale putting Surge Engine back on top. Yeah, that's fine. And another Mastermind. Well, they still don't have any great blocks. Opponent falls to 5. So we'll see if they have a Sweeper here, but after playing Mastermind, that seems unlikely. They will get to draw off announcements, maybe find another answer. Another winning announcement. So these will all turn into 2-2 two, two creatures. But they still don't have an answer to Surge Engine necessarily. So yeah, step 1 attack. Opponent double jumps and looks like Surge Engine manages to cross the finish line. So nice aggressive start thanks to our training ground. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and so what do we think of this hand? Well, we've got most of the combo pieces except for training grounds. Hawker gives us more mana to activate Grifter. Yeah, I mean, this could work. Of course, a second land will be required. Prefer discarding fairy, depending on the matchup against Monorad. Monorad's gonna be tough, but now we've got a land to play Grifter, and I think I'm gonna immediately connive. Discarding. Wow, well, we found a training ground. So Hellkite could go. Swiss Peer with a counter, no red mana left, so we could just block and our opponent passes. Awesome. Alright, so what's the fastest way we can combo kill here? I need to get Sleep Cursed in the graveyard. If I play a Training Grounds, I can use Grifter for one mana, so I can activate it twice if we tap Omen Hawker. And that can maybe find a lane for turn. Perfect. I guess Sleep Curse wants to go to the graveyard here. 
And then I could still connive once again. Play Cauldron. And I'll keep the creature in case we run out somehow. Play Cauldron. And pass a turn. And then Cauldron exiling Sleep Cursed Fairy on the Omen Hawker would set up infinite mana next turn. And then we already have Hellkites. So yeah, if our opponent doesn't kill Omen Hawker here, we should have it. <laughs> and that's enough for a concession. I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with what looks like a promising hand. Missing training grounds and uh, our cauldron, of course. But we've got a lot of cantrips. Turn one could play Omen Hawker. Turn two go Grifter plus Connive. Opponent on blue white, and there's cauldron. Okay. So just a training grounds away here from potentially comboing off. Although against blue white control, I'm sure opponent's gonna have something to say about it. Still going to play Grifter. And then we can activate conniving Sleep Curse Fairy to the graveyard. As we see in Augury. Okay. So perhaps a Mind Splice Apparatus deck. It's critical that our Cauldron resolves. So I don't want to run it into a potential counter spell here. Instead I can attack with Grifter. And then keep up a few of our cantrips. Including connive with Grifter plus Impulse. Digs pretty deep. Opponent with a Union. That's acceptable. Another augury. Okay, so it might be shields down on a counter spell this turn. Let's start with an impulse. Mirex does still make blue mana, so they could be tempted to counter here. Fateful absence, the grifter instead. So I could connive once again, or we can just consider at this point. Since my hand's not bad. I guess we can let the impulse resolve first then. Could also use Hawker to sacrifice the clue token, which is pretty sweet. Found our training grounds. Okay. So everything should be in place. Sank the clue. And consider another cauldron. Could be good insurance, I suppose, in case they deal with the first one. They might be playing March of Otherworldly Lights if they're on a Mind Splice deck. So play Cauldron, play Second Fairy. The only concern with playing Fairy is Sunfall exiling all my creatures and then not having any creatures left to combo off. Although if I only have the one creature and they have spot removal, then I wouldn't be able to combo either. I think it's more likely for them to have a Sunfall than more spot removal, to be honest. So play Cauldron. And then there's Grifter, Fairy in the graveyard. So yeah, with Fairy and Training Grounds, I can make infinite mana for abilities. But of course, that doesn't lead us anywhere yet. Probably fine to play Training Grounds, have that resolve. And then I could Slide of Hand as well. And find an island. Don't think we'll need witness protection here. Unless our opponent plays Denik, which could potentially mess up our graveyard. So I'll pass. And there's a Mind Splice main phase. So, yeah, opponent could just be dead here. Cauldron. Exiling Sleep Cursed. Take our turn. And then now exiling our Grifter means I get infinite connive with infinite mana. And our opponent's at 25, so it's just a matter of getting our creature 
to 25 power, which should not be too difficult. So first off, we'll just make a whole bunch of mana. I'm pretty much going to draw my whole deck here to get this to enough power to win. So we'll need a lot of mana to activate Connive. We also have a Soaring City, which could bounce the Mind Splice apparatus for what it's worth. So even if our opponent had a blocker, we could have used Soaring City to bounce it and then still kill the opponent with a very large Omen Hawker. So we'll need more than uh, 22 mana here, since we'll also end up drawing a few lanes that we discard with Connive. I'm aiming for 35 mana before I start drawing and discarding. Opponent's main phasing Mind Splice to play around a counter spell. Could be playing a card like Make Disappear in this build pretty easily. I decided not to include any and instead go for more cantrips to hopefully assemble the combo more consistently. And then if we were to play this in best of three, we could make room for some counter spells. Malevolent Hermit, also very good in this deck, as potentially exiling it with Cauldron turns all our creatures into counter spells. Alright, so this is probably a good spot to start conniving. And we want to discard our non-land cards as much as possible. Although, as we see here, quickly find ourselves with a bunch of islands in hand. And our opponent concedes. Luckily, they don't make us go through all the motions here. All right, so we get to see our mono blue cauldron deck in action, and it's definitely doing some very unique things in standard that you're not going to see anywhere else. Of course, the deck still being pretty new and people not being used to play against it is also going to favor our deck, at least for the time being. Once people get to know the deck a bit better, it may fall off in terms of overall win percentage. So play it while it's hot, I would say, and enjoy it since it's definitely a fun one. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.